I can't stop thinking on Edgewater, Captain. I'm glad the deserters are gonna be all right now they got power, but... What about the town? All those people... In the bar? When I asked if you were a drinker? Sorry. I know, it's none of my business. It's not like I think it a failing, mind. It's just I... I live right across the road. Most nights I watch folks out my window. When they come in here, they might be happy or sad. Mostly they're tired. When they leave, they're mad at themselves. Or they stumble into the alley and I listen to their hearts breaking. Maybe so. But we don't think on it that way. Yeah, huh? Something you need? Welcome back, Captain. All systems are now operating within acceptable parameters. Shall I On my way. On my way. Where are we headed?
Self-diagnostics complete. Navigation systems operational. Combat systems operational. It's not the best choice. It's the spacer's choice. All systems fully operational. Return journey successfully completed. Spacer's Choice would like to thank you for complying with your duties. Hostile actions towards Spacer's Choice mechanics are contrary to logical directive. Conclusion, all hostile auto-mechanicals must be defective in compliance with Spacer's Choice policy. All defective auto-mechanicals must be permanently dismantled. Please allow me to assist. Affirmative. Mechanicide protocols loaded. Awaiting confirmation. Yeah, huh? Sure thing, Captain. I'll be waiting back at the Unreliable if you need me. Mechanicide protocols currently active. Please do not interrupt. Genocide protocols currently active. Please do not interrupt.
Mechanicide protocols currently active. Please do not interrupt. If you're hungry, Stefan's got supplies. Oh, I uh, didn't see you there. I was, uh, well, I was just occupying myself with a little engineering. Sorry about that. Machines are cantankerous by nature, liable to take insult and blow a fuse at the slightest mishandling. Are you from town? Uh, I mean, you don't exactly look like you're from town. Well, what I meant was you're reasonably well-armed and don't look stricken with plague. Sorry, I just wasn't sure if you were from town or if you were one of us. Something's been chewing at me, you see. Fact is, I've been, well, lying to everybody here. Camp thinks I'm a mechanical genius, but I couldn't fix a busted chair. I'll take all the help I can get. I set my mind to learning the craft of the engineer, you see. I want to make something of myself. You ever heard of the Young Spacer's Guide to Mechanical Engineering? Comes in a set of three. If I had my hands on one of those data pads, I could teach myself the ins and outs. There's one in the old community center. Should find one back in town, too. Parvati's dad had a copy. He used to take it with him when he worked at the cannery before he passed. No kidding! Really? Well, which one? Look at that! Building a computing machine out of Spectrum Potatoes, a primer! I'm just glad it survived all these years. I appreciate you going through all that trouble. In fact, I put aside something special on the off chance that somebody would search out those data pads for me. Well, don't keep me in suspense! The geothermal plant? Now that is just incredible! You really went exploring down there? Adelaide always told us it was swarming with hostile mechanicals. Two whole data pads? Be still my beating heart! Oh, almost forgot your payment. Sure, I'd be glad to take them off your hands. What's on your mind? Couple months. This camp's my home. People you see milling about? They're my family. At least I think of them that way. I owe them my life. Would have died in the wilderness if they hadn't chanced upon me, starving and delirious. We all left the cannery for one reason or another. Me? I was let go. Mostly on account of my incompetence. I mean, I was incompetent. I couldn't even survive on my own. Grace found me, Adelaide took me in, I've been on my feet ever since.
wonder if something happened down at the plant. Any luck finding one of those manuals? No kidding. Really? Well, which one? Ain't that just ironical. If I'd worked a little longer back at the cannery, I might have found this myself. That's a complete set. All three parts. I'm gonna be the greatest engineer Halcyon's ever seen. I've been saving something for you. Uh, just a little contraption I found. Should fit right into your outfit.
Don't see the sense in all this fussing over the power. Cannery shutting down just means I'll have more bodies to bury. Got a knack for being discreet like? There's money to be made, long as you keep your nose clean. Edgewater is a company town, board owned and operated. That includes the cemetery. None of us own our grave sites, we rent them from the company. Renting means money. Money means paperwork. Paperwork means signatures. Some of our families become a mite delinquent in paying their dues, you see. Four workers still haven't paid up. Phyllis, Conrad, Ludwig, and Martin Abernathy. He's a special case. You may want to twist his arm a little. He just is. Look, I don't want to get into it. Just make sure he pays up. Conrad's got a barber shop in town. Phyllis works at the cannery most hours. Abernathy... I ain't seen him in a few days. His domicile is near the cannery. You'll find him in town. All except Ludwig, that is. He's over by the landing pad. Town's been dark a while now. Could be a mechanical trying to sabotage us. I told Silas I'd pay my dues if he agreed to join the resistance. Guess this means he's finally heard the calling. Mechanical repellent. A stroke of inspiration from the law itself. Here, I've been saving up a couple bits for just such a project. Just as I was on the mend, the cannery had to go and shut down. Silas knows, doesn't he? That's why he sent you. That's why he wants me to pay up. He knows. Here, take my fees. I'm never getting that medicine, so I may as well buy myself a grave. Something nice and wide, with plenty of room to spin around inside. to find time to visit, stranger. Foreman Granger, mind those words don't come out of your mouth unless preceded by yes or right away or thank you. Shit. Silas still on about that? Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. Because they're not my fees and not my gravesite. Guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. I could do without the sarcasm wasn't acting out of the goodness of my heart. Law requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative, which meant me. Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. Woke up one morning and put a round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. The kid was doing all right at his desk. We all thought he was an upstanding receptionist. Just between the two of us, I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. Spacer's choice handguns aren't the most reliable. Not half as awful as the bill Eugene left us with. Suicide's a crime. The legal term is irreparable damage to company property. What Eugene did to himself was vandalism. I'm plenty serious. In fact, I'm a little upset Eugene didn't think things through. In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's choice. Well, excuse you. I'll have you know, Eugene was an asset to us all. May his atoms be commended to the law. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees, which means he was approved for burial, which means his papers went through, which means the town's in the clear. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. Eugene can rest his bones in peace, 
and the rest of us can get on with our own lives. What can I do for you? Ah, gravesite fees. Silas and I had talked about this at length. I thought I'd made it clear my pecuniary situation precludes the necessary restitutions. I mean that I can't possibly pay my gravesite fees. I simply cannot afford it. I am a blemish on the prosperity of our fair settlement. When I expire, I expect Silas to toss my body into a ditch. Edgewater is built on the discipline and sacrifice of its people. Say what you will about our town, but we all pull together. Tell Silas I can't afford to pay, and that I fully expect to have my medical rights revoked for this dereliction, with my apologies. Some time ago, I fell ill with the plague. By the grace of the law, and through my own hard work, I'd proven worthy of treatment. Frankly, I don't imagine I'll earn that right a second time. The barber work hasn't been profitable, you see. I've had to keep this old place running with my own savings. Not a bad idea. But I'd need some kind of collateral. My pair of lucky clippers! No, that won't do. Your idea intrigues me, but I'm afraid I don't have anything to give Silas. I'm open to suggestions. You know about Eugene? How? Were you snooping around in my things? Or was it just dumb luck? Eugene's golden teeth were a family heirloom, representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. He took them to his grave. That's unthinkable. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein are solely the property of Spacer's choice. I can't ask Silas to dig up a man's body and pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills? Can I? Here you are. Gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an IOU. Eugene was not a suicide. He put a bullet in his brain, yes, but that's largely a technicality. I was the one who prepared Eugene's body for interment. I discovered symptoms of the plague on his corpse, and I discovered medicine in his pocket. Lots of medicine. Eugene overdosed on Adrena time, which is known to cause psychosis and paranoia as possible side effects. The paranoia drove him to take his own life. We can all thank our lucky stars that young Eugene was hopped up on medication and suffered its predictable side effect. I included it all in my official report. I'd like to think I saved Edgewater a great deal of money. We never could have paid the fines associated with a suicide. Grave digging's a fine profession. Always work to be had, and nary a word of complaint out of your clients. You run into any trouble? Reliable work from a freelancer. That's gonna take some getting used to. And I'll buy you a drink sometime. Uh, suppose you've earned it. One good turn deserves another. Abernathy was sick? With the plague? That's disgusting. I shook hands with the guy. I needed his fees because of his name. A for Abernathy. He was at the top of my list, you see? Yeah? You could look at it that way, I suppose. You could look at us and say, those Edgewater saps lost near every soul to plague. But you'd be wrong. We're survivors. Loyal company folk, brave in the wilds. Every now and again, a virulent plague sweeps through our town. That's life on the frontier, I suppose. A body grows accustomed. Hang on, I'm doing some math in my head. Uh, 20, 30, carry the one. Uh, 
all my life. Work's been real good to me. Fresh air, exercise. The only problem is the paperwork. Can't get anybody to pay their gravesite fees. Former people, yeah. Marauder's been raiding my graves, you see. Hence the armed guards. Even if you weren't helping Reyes out, I couldn't tell you. I am prohibited from saying anything that reflects poorly on Spacer's choice. Ah, avoid it. Shouldn't have said that either. Look, forget I said anything. Thank you. 